Okay, hi, my name is Bantriot from Polycount, and I had a few people ask me how I um, went about modeling this um, high poly version of my dome. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd do a little video showing um, the progress I've used to, or sorry, the techniques I've used to uh, come up with this result. So, what we see at the moment is the unsmooth model, and it's around 1.6 million polys. Um, and as said, I have no turbo smooth uh, turned on at the moment, so I guess it's about five or six millions um, when it's smooth. So um, let's start with um, these roof tiles. Um, as you can see, this is just uh, um, a thing I've instanced around the entire dome, so if I make any changes to this, um, it will of course uh, happen on the others too, and it's also um, better for the display uh, viewport performance because um, I don't know why exactly, but uh, it just helps a bit, especially also when rendering. Anyway, so here we have um, the finished part, or piece you can call it, and as you can see, it um, well, it isn't exactly uh, very hard to do. It's a simple um, poly polygonal or poly modeling is called, sorry. And um, I've just applied these slice modifiers in order to um, to make sure it didn't uh, intervene with each other. If we go out here to the scene and disable the slices, you can see they kind of they kind of intersect with each other, and we don't want that. So turning those on again. Um, so yeah, let's uh, slowly go down the stack. So I'm gonna start by turning off everything I have. Sorry, there we go. And this is pretty much my base uh, model. It's actually a pretty simple process to model these. Um, what I did is um, I made four lanes of planes. Um, you can, let me show you quickly. If we go into the front view here, what I did is I ma made four of these planes. Um, and I already decided how many tiles I wanted. So we just up the length uh, segments there. And what I did is what I um, I actually just copied until it matched, like so, and I made it an instance, and I um, offset it about half, so you kind of get this um, pattern thingy, and it was just a question of um, copying them. And of course, I would have used snap here um, to make sure there wasn't this um, little gap here, but uh, just for heaven's sake, I'm just gonna do it quickly here and it's pretty much um, just like this um, what I did afterwards it was I um, um, converted um, oh, I applied an edible poly modifier to it like so and I um, I started by laying down some um, control loops you should be familiar with this if you're used to doing normal poly stuff and it's just a sorry it's just a matter of um, laying it so you have the right uh, distance between uh, depending how um, smooth you want your edges to be. Um, <laughs> there's really not much to say about this part because it's, it was just normal um, high poly stuff. You just made a little gap between on these uh, edges with uh, using the chamfer and uh, taking this so it's open. And I made it around, uh, I guess, 0 0.2 and something like that. And, um, <laughs> and what I actually did too was make sure that the, this gap right here was the same as between the um, the different rows. Um, so that ensured we have some kind of uniform uh, spacing between the tiles. Um, and as we can see here on this part, um, there also I also added. You can actually see how it looks before I add the shell modifier. It's just a simple box with um, with the control edges, and it's just repeating itself all the way down here. Uh, what I did down here was I, s I did a slice over it, so I did I didn't need the polygons down here. So I don't know idea why I haven't done it there, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then I added a shell modifier, so uh, we give them a thickness. And I did it with four segments to make sure um, 
when I turbo smoothed it, it uh, it stayed uh, squared. I can you can say, but still having some smooth edges due to the um, the placement of the edges. So if we apply my turbo smooth down here, and you can see at the moment it's set to zero iterations, but uh, render iterations are free. So if we just pump this a bit up, you can see we have um, pretty much the the tile pattern, um, beautifully smooth and everything. As you can see, we have a uh, very nice edges. Um, so what I did afterwards is um, I actually have a block out model of my dome um, that kind of represented the entire uh, shape I wanted, the general shape I have done in my block out of the entire scene. And um, so what I did, I just lined it up and I applied two bend modifiers first, making sure it uh, kind of followed the, the circular curve here. And the second is the spheric curve, I guess you can call it. And that's pretty much it. Nothing really uh, amazing there. Um, and then of course the two slice modifiers. Uh, so I can go uh, go ahead and disable that turbo smooth again. I'm just gonna keep delete this. Um, so another thing I wanted to show is um, the beams we got here. I'm gonna go ahead. And the reason why I'm not showing the thing that is on top of it is because it's actually actually the, the same process I've used. Um, so what I did here as you can see at the bottom we have an edible spline. Um, I'm just gonna turn on turbo smooth and my edible podium. And the spline is pretty simple. Um, I I actually um, took it from the blackout using um, if you if I'm gonna go make a quick sphere here, convert it to an edible pony. There we go. Um, what I did is, uh, if, if you imagine this was the dome, I took the uh, this one. Oh, sorry, uh, fucking up. Anyways, I took this one, half of it, and 